Hello everybody, Brian Essig here from How To Automotive. Um, today I got a, a Nissan Maxima in the shop with, uh, with code P015 engine coolant temp sensor and P0125 insufficient coolant temp for a closed loop is the codes. And uh, I was going to walk you through my process of uh, how I would go about figuring that out. I kind of suspect it may be a, a thermostat, but we're going to look at a little scan data and um, and uh, just to rule that out. And I had the customer drop the car off last night, so the car is cold. So we're going to watch the scan data as it's cold and as it warms up and see what that looks like. And also check the thermostat, the upper radio or the hose, and um, and check the hose, the temp, you know, before and after, and then um, try to make a determination. The only other symptom that the customer said that at one time it had a high idle, but now it seems to be idling just fine. Okay, before we get too involved in it, what I did was on you know, my scan tool here, it has a troubleshooter, which uh, this is a snap-on snap, uh, scan tool, and um, it gives you little pointers on the code tips. I went to the troubleshooter, entered in the code, exact code, and um, it is set, the, uh, so it gave us a little brief description on what sets the code, and it says here that opens opens in the coolant temp sensor it, uh, circuit is the main cause for this two, uh, P0115 code. So, with that knowledge, that may lead me not to think that it's a, um, a thermostat problem. It may actually be a wiring problem. But we're, also, we're going to check the basics before we go jumping conclusions. We're going to check the coolant level. We're going to check all this stuff before you go jump into uh, diagnosing with electrical problems and stuff. So our second code is uh, P0125. And it, it says set... Uh, sets when the ECM detects coolant temp sensor voltage that is out of range for the and uh, so if we look here we it looks like this is the actual temperature current reading 96 degrees Fahrenheit like I said this engine is cold it hasn't been running so I'm looking at live scan data of the car right now as it it's cold I drove it like 10 feet to drive it in the bay so it says coolant temp is 95 degrees the actual uh, uh, engine coolant temp since is uh, 95 to Fahrenheit and um, so we're gonna start this car up let it run and warm up and we're gonna actually watch it with the scan tool here and at the same time I'm gonna monitor the, um, the thermostat on outside in the engine bay from a cold to see how, see how long it takes the thermostat to open up and then I'm also gonna do a, a visual inspection under the hood check and look look at the actual sensor itself I looked up a TSB and one of the common problems is corrosion buildup on the actual sensors itself to make them read out of, out of range or out of spec. So I'm gonna look into all that stuff. But I won't take this, the uh, sensor apart until it um, reaches uh, operating temperature and I uh, check it down. So on the uh, passenger side, or uh, driver side of the car, engine, right here, I'll just up off the uh, valve cover here, the uh, coil temperature, and I'm looking at it. Hard to see how the connector is not in very good shape. I can actually see the wire, and I can actually see the little, the little wire actually. Uh, I can see the copper wire itself, maybe the insulation is breaking down. That could be our focus right there. So, I'm checking the basic stuff for the coolant that was pulled when it came in. And then on the uh, passenger side, the lower, the lower hose here, we have the valve cover here. So on the lower hose, the air is going out, and the air is going out, and the air So, testing here at the thermostat here, saying it's 98 degrees. Like I said, I just started it, so I've got to find it. The way these sensors work is the computer puts approximately five volts in one wire in the wire here. And uh, as the temperature is cold, there's very little resistance in the, in the uh, sensor. So you'll see about three and a half volts coming back at you. But as the uh, temperature rises, the resistance in the, in the uh, temperature sensor changes and uh, you'll see the voltage drop. And then once it drops down to about a 
roughly again, you know, a half dose or so. You need to move it over half a dose, that's a normal operating temperature. Uh, that would be one way of telling that it works. So, it's set to check into your light because of a voltage that you're coming back to the PCM. So it could be the sensor itself, or it could be the thermostat not opening soon enough, or stuck open, so it never actually gets warm enough for the and, uh, so it, has, it knows it takes a certain amount of time for it to reach the uh, operating temperature to uh, your RDP program with your computer. And so it compares that. So if it doesn't get to a certain operating temperature within a certain amount of time, and it also considers the ambient temperature of the uh, outside temperature taking its place. So that's how it configures, configures all of this information and it's set to check into my board. So while the engine's warming up with my other little scan tool, I got two scan tools hooked up to it. One's hooked up to the Nissan 2 connector, and one's hooked up to the generic uh, OBD2 OBD generic connector. So I'm looking at the freeze frame data, and I'm seeing them on the screen. It's a little blurry for you guys, but I'll try to just read it off to you. Um, but it says the calculated engine uh, calculated load was, uh, was 78%. Engine coolant temp was negative thir uh, 36 See, I'm not seeing this type of evidence now. Everything's looking good. Uh, Long-term fuel trim was at 3.9. Short term, short, short term was uh, 7.8. Uh, MAP was uh, 12, uh, 12 and a half uh, psi. Let's see if it has a vehicle speed here. The vehicle speed was 34 miles per hour. RPM is at uh, 2,175. So after running for about five or six minutes here, maybe seven minutes, the coolant temp on the dash is pretty much right in the middle, and the coolant temp on the car is reading, you know, roughly 200 psi or 200 degrees. So now I'm gonna go check the thermostat and see what that looks like. So after running seven eight minutes and looking at the temperature here, it's reading roughly 120. things I like to do is not touch this like we, we suspect the coolant temp sensor is not touch anything until you do a lot of your preliminary checks because if you touch the sensor right away you might inadvertently fix it make create the contact to um, reconnect uh, and inadvertently uh, fix it and you won't even know it and you'll chase your tail so one of the things is leave it alone until you do all your uh, preliminary checks first and check check those things out first and now so I've done a lot of all my preliminary checks and nothing's really showing up the scan tool data is looking good the uh, the thermostat seems to have opened up and, and worked doesn't mean it didn't stick on it and it happened and it also doesn't mean that there was a bad connection here at the coolant temp sensor so now that it's um, all those have checked out now I'm gonna pull it off and, and, and look at this wiring a little closer it looks a little skeptical and also I want to check to see if the uh, TSB said that there's it's common for for corrosion to build up on the terminal so I'm gonna check that now so I have the uh, the temp sensor unplugged I'm looking in the plug itself and I don't see any corrosion in there it looks actually pretty clean and the uh, inside of the connector looks clean too but what I'm seeing is if you see how it's all cracked up and broken if, if I could flare it out like that a little bit and then also on the wiring here I could actually see a little bare wire on both of these wires here where the insulation has broken so I'm just yeah so on this side you can actually see both both of the insulation so judging by the, the, the freeze frame data where it was negative 36 degrees and the uh, and the and what I'm seeing here now where it's actually reading and the, and the thermostat opened, the fans ran, the coolant's 
everything seems to be fine and working now. Some fix so what I think may have happened here is this connector is as it's driving down the road it's vibrating and losing connection. And um, so what I'm gonna recommend for my diagnosis on this car at this time is this connect connector connection here is uh, most likely the cause and um, so I'm gonna uh, recommend a new pigtail here and um, and uh, a new uh, plug here and uh, since it's probably not that expensive and, and since we're in here right now I, we might as well change the sensor it has been in here for a while and that's gonna be my diagnosis and that's kind of the process you just Sometimes diagnosing cars is not clear cut with the, uh, it's not happening right now as we speak. But uh, I do have some evidence of, a, of a, a failed part right here. So I'm gonna fix that first before I continue you know, doing any other work to the car. Once again, this is Brian Essick from How To Automotive and I'd like to thank you for watching my videos. And it's my pleasure sharing my experience with you guys. And I uh, encourage you guys to Subscribe and follow me on Facebook at Facebook slash How to Automotive. And um, thank you again.